Okay, uh, I've got some questions actually related with uh, bio-inspired uh, metamaterials. I noticed uh, there was this photo of a moth. You know, at some point uh, there was a slide with a, a photo of a moth. Uh, if we could get back to this. Oh, photo. The photo of moth. Yes, that's right. Yeah. So it was, uh, um, yeah, a, a very well known. Uh, they like you know, uh, catch and uh, or, or yeah, actually say hide and seek uh, strategy is a more uh, played, right? And so, um, what is uh, this paper about? In fact, it's uh, about uh, the scattering properties of the moth. Uh, I mean, uh, what what is it oh. about? This particular paper was about the uh, soft materials. I, I didn't point to the spec. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, I didn't point to the specific studies, but I think uh, there are some uh, fascinating uh, uh, results uh, that are being reported recently. I believe uh, uh, one from uh, uh, the uh, is that the University of uh, uh, Sheffield, uh, looking at uh, the uh, uh, how uh, the scales of moth actually could uh, also offer. A, a new insight of uh, uh, how uh, sound absorption or, or impedance uh, matching uh, is enabled by that layer. Fascinating. There is also this group in Bristol, uh, mm -hmm. the group of Mark Alderid, and mm -hmm. they have published recent papers and they get some ultra broadband uh, uh, sound absorption by certain moth species. Mm -hmm. And it's Deeply sub wavelengths. I think the wavelength is 1000 times larger than the thickness of the wing. <laughs> yes, 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 indeed. Yeah, so, so apparently there is a, you know, a very effective uh, defense strategy that the moth developed, uh, say, uh, against predators such as uh, uh, bat. And could you say a little bit more on the jellyfish as well? Yeah, so uh, in the case of jellyfish, uh, it turns out that uh, uh, the, uh, I'll say like, you know, large uh, volume of uh, say, uh, water embedded in the softest tissue is uh, uh, a also, you know, a very important strategy for jellyfish to reduce the acoustic signal. You can think about uh, the case of, uh, uh, say like, you know, Dolphins and uh, uh, I believe uh, you know, turtles, they uh, you know, like to chase you know, jellyfish in some cases, but uh, making uh, say, uh, I would say the skin or, or shell uh, invisible to the predator is a very uh, uh, effective way for jellyfish to hide themselves. Fascinating. And uh, do you still pursue your studies on uh, acoustic cloaks? Have you well, made some advances on this uh, topic? Yes, Sebastian, thank you very much for uh, <laughs> yeah, reading that up. Uh, yeah, we have uh, one paper with you actually uh, back in 2015. Yeah. Um, yeah, looking at uh, the uh, say, you know, ultrasound and uh, electromagnetic cloaks. Um, yeah, so. I'm not using cloak today for most of the talk, but I will say that uh, yeah, uh, there are say, you know concepts that are uh, you know learned or inspired by uh, making the uh, uh, say uh, structure uh, say uh, you know uh, more efficient in sound transmission and uh, uh, maintaining, for example, the phase retardance. And um, uh, Professor Fong, can you envision the future of acoustic metamaterials? What would be your dream? What would you like to achieve, you know, if you were some kind of god? <laughs> <laughs> That's a great question. I'm hoping that uh, I can look, uh, look into the crystal balls, but uh, I would say that uh, uh, for acoustics, uh, um, we can pinpoint to you know some uh, uh, say uh, immediate challenges as I, I point out uh, at the uh, very beginning. Uh, I think uh, um, if we are uh, thinking about uh, imaging, 
then uh, breaking the say uh, diffraction limit using mm -hmm. uh, acoustic metal materials will be a very important achievement uh, that uh, will enable uh, uh, to say uh, different uh, domains, for example, for the medical ultrasound as well as for uh, non-destructive uh, non testing. Uh, and there is a, also yeah, a, a great need for uh, say uh, intersection between light and sound. Um, say uh, surface acoustic wave devices today has uh, really like you know uh, uh, revolutionized uh, for example the way that uh, electronic signal is being processed so i think there is a, a very uh, exciting opportunity uh, for the uh, micro and nano scale uh, but uh, uh, on the larger scale i think uh, uh, what i'm showing you today would uh, may uh, would have some direct impact, for example, to provide a uh, uh, lightweight and uh, probably uh, more, you know, uh, environmental environmentally friendly solutions to uh, uh, bring our society, you know, uh, of a uh, say lower impact to the wildlife, to the um, the, the nature as well as to say, the uh, public domain. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think Emil has some questions for you. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you for the wonderful talk. And I have to say, I'm a little bit jealous. You have all these toys to play with. <laughs> uh, and uh, fabricate whatever one can imagine with um, this software. Uh, on the slide where uh, um, you show these solutions with uh, <clears throat> what was the channels which were dense on one side and less dense on the other side i forgot the the technical name for for that solution sure sure yeah i will say that this is probably like a you know a thin sheet of uh, matter, uh, materials uh we say the uh hydrogen as a mat uh, matrix and uh, the liquid uh, is filling into the channel uh but rather uh, about the uh the 3D structure, which was like a cube mm -hmm. with. Oh, I see. Yeah. So the 3D structure uh, is uh, made out of, uh, say, uh, layered uh, uh, cylinders. Uh, if you look at, uh, uh, say, uh, the uh, perspective view, the uh, one on the uh, far left uh, contains uh, cylinders of larger diameter and uh, uh, the uh, cylinders of a smaller diameter and um, uh, more sparsely uh, uh, distributed are located on the uh, say uh, in the middle uh, of this uh, composite structure with the hydrogels uh, uh, filling in the middle and when you calculate the transmission the sound propagates in which direction from the sound propagates from the the dense region to the uh, uh, sparse region and uh, uh, in fact, the signal is measured uh, on the water side. That's right. Am I correct when saying that um, what uh, you are doing here, you are really engineering the interface between uh, one one side uh, to the other side? And if this um, boundary would have been uh, very sharp, you cannot escape the lambda over four. Uh, uh, part of it. While here, okay, you need a little bit of uh, buffer, and now you can do this uh, interesting broadband matching. Oh, that's correct. Yeah, I think that's a that's a, a very fair assessment. A sharp uh, uh, boundary is our enemy. If you wanted to say uh, find a solution that can. They transform from one side to the other, uh, then there will be a, a, a lot more demanding. So, uh, at the end, this solution does require a buffer. Uh, yes. Buffer yeah. size. So how, how do we reduce this uh, buffer, uh, buffer layer, say? That's a great question. I guess uh, uh, we can learn something. You know, uh, from uh, Professor Pinchon's earlier paper, uh, which uh, you know, uh, highlight uh, you know, the uh, scattering uh, scattering process in in the so to speak uh, you know, uh, later medium. Um, I don't have a, a, a you know, 
a, a clear solution yet. I, I would say that this is only the very beginning of uh, the story. We may be able to uh, think about uh, the, uh, say, like space coiling effects as, uh, as I showed uh, uh, later. But uh, we don't know yet what is uh, the ultimate, uh, ultimate limit. What will be the, the thinnest uh, buffer layer that one can uh, bring compared to the wavelengths? Thank you. Thank you. Fernando, you had a question or I saw your raise. You're more than welcome, Fernando, if you have a question. <laughs> or oh, anyone, by the way. Ah. Um, hello, how are you? Hello. Unfortunately, I cannot hear you yet. Yeah. You're right, you're right. My microphone was off. Sorry, sorry. So, oh, no uh, I have a, I am interested in, um, uh, your, uh, top your research because uh, I'm also working on a similar topic, uh, which is related to the use of tensegrity structures for acoustic materials because of this impedance, uh, um, uh, adaptivity. Uh, of the, uh, the, the your uh, research is also a goal of this uh, a target of this uh, research on tensegrity meta acoustic metamaterials. So, what do you think about the fact that one can uh, design a structure which is uh, unstable in a, in the reference configuration uh, due to geometric uh, uh, effects and uh, whose uh, stiffness is given only. By the tension of some cables, so it's a, it would be unstable uh, unless uh, the uh, the um, uh, given uh, pretension is uh, applied to the strings. So in this way, you the, the stiffness of the structure is completely controlled through the pre-stress, and so you can have a very uh, uh, broadband um, uh, variation of the stiffness and the the impedance of the of the metamaterial. So what do you think about this possibility of playing with this uh, uh, effect of tensegrity systems as a, as a, an, an alternative uh, uh, tool for uh, achieving a broadband uh, response of uh, acoustic metamaterials? Yeah, thank you very much, Fernando. Um, yeah, sorry, I, I was not able to uh, listen to, uh, you know, um, the problem, uh, the problem. in the seminar. Uh, I, I will make sure that uh, I go back to the uh, video recordings to, to uh, okay, you know, no find more details. But uh, yeah, I, I think uh, the idea you uh, you brought up is very fascinating. Um, yeah, uh, there are a lot of uh, say, uh, I'll say like you know theoretical uh, concepts that uh, I need to digest. But uh, I feel that. Uh, the tensegrity <laughs> model is probably one of the uh, important features that, uh, uh, say, you know, biology, you know, uh, has uh, kind of you know, already adapted. Uh, so, in terms of uh, like uh, you know, uh, of, I'll say the tensegrity that apparently uh, offer, for example, on-demand transmission. This is yes. probably a very exactly. uh, important uh, effect, uh, you know, that uh, could, uh, uh, um, you know, yeah. open up the window only at the, the uh, period of time to, uh, for example, you know, validate or, 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 or communicate from outside. Um, so, uh, I think uh, 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 this is uh, a, a direction that, uh, you know, we are very much interested in collaboration and uh, if, uh, uh, for example, uh, you have any like you know, uh, uh, needs or potential uh, uh, the uh, uh, students who are looking for yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm looking uh, for techniques. We are we're happy to discuss. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, <laughs> that's a possibility. Uh, one one way we could collaborate. One possibility is also to miniaturize. I I know that you you are very 
good in uh, building this uh, uh, micro scale system. So uh, this is a challenge with integrity. So that the problem mm -hmm. with integrity is is, is uh, theoretically you can do uh, many uh, nice effects. You can uh, uh, achieve many nice effects. That the problem, the challenge is to to build uh, to miniaturize the the integrity structure with pre stress. So that that is a, a challenge, and we can. Mm -hmm discuss if there is any possibility of a collaboration certainly thank you well, will i be correct if i say that there is a connection between the uh, the system where you embedded the ferromagnetic or magnetic particles in uh, hydrogels and tensegrity uh, there are but uh, in that particular case <laughs> we were not uh, using any uh, uh, i would say like a you know, uh, gradient or, or, or uh, trying to uh, maximize the transmission. So, so I would say that, uh, uh, you yeah, know, there is a, a wide open space. And in particular, if we think about an inverse problem, we don't know what it will be the desired tensegrity model or, or, or the ah. physical library. But you can still uh, supply transmission on demand, as you said it. Yes, that's right. By, by just then. Uh, yeah, so so we don't know what what will be the the required magnetic field distribution, for example. We we don't know what will be the um, constraints applied to the lattice. I I can I can pose uh, a problem which uh, uh, I think I think needs a solution. And uh, I, for example, live on a very busy street. <clears throat> And uh, not long ago, the speed uh, on this street was uh, 40 miles per hour. Then they reduced it to 35, now to 30. And you notice that the level of noise reduces tremendously. And the noise really comes from this rubber slapping on the asphalt and producing this sound. Um, then the other way, the other day, driving a, a Tesla, you realize that uh, okay, there is a lot of noise just coming from the tires, slapping again. Uh, how do we <laughs> reduce this uh, noise coming basically from the tires slapping the asphalt? Is there any way? <laughs> That's a great question. Uh... Yeah, we have we do have a uh, some you know, preliminary uh, project or, or seed project uh, uh, funded by BSF, uh, looking at uh, uh, the so-called squeaking sound. Uh, I think there are still a lot to learn, uh, but uh, uh, apparently <laughs> the uh, uh, sound sources that are caused by the uh, rubber sticking and slipping. Uh, is uh, also in subwavelength nature, so maybe there is a way to, you know, uh, uh, mitigate uh, the uh, sound propagation at a larger scale. So there is a chance to have a, a layer, an outer layer, uh, somehow nicely, yeah. nicely so engineered. Sound radiation engineering, right? So that that yeah. maybe uh, you know one potential solution for that. That's right, because uh, even if you reduce it by even 10%, will make a big difference. Yes. And uh, yeah, I should uh, always say to people who are speeding up that uh, you create a lot of problem for the for the for the neighborhood because uh, the noise really is bothering. Uh, yeah, I I also like the idea with the cage and uh, with the which um, stop sound but let the the flow uh, the flow go i have a I bought a workstation uh, it's was sitting on my desk and unfortunately the workstation is not that quiet as i was hoping and this workstation clearly needs air to vent the heat yet uh, i need to stop that sound uh, from bothering me so that's also something uh, uh, I, yeah, I think some of your research direction could help with. And, uh, Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, so that's a, a, a exciting opportunity 
Uh, and uh, I can see there is a lot of uh, say fascinating uh, opportunities that are rising up uh, that challenge our uh, understanding and uh, say a, a method of uh, manipulating sound that uh, yeah very very uh, a common life uh, you know I'll say uh, lifestyle problems. Okay, great. Are there any more questions? Speaking of sound, we've got an airplane just passing above, and uh, he, he, yeah. in fact, uh, Imperial College is on the trajectory of airplanes landing in his flow. So every few minutes. <laughs> yes. It's, it's really annoying. Yes. You've got to find some solution for these guys. Uh, what do you think of the future of space-time uh, metamaterials, uh, Professor Fang? Yeah, Can I, you think that, uh, uh -huh. I think that's a very exciting, uh, I'll say, playground for, uh, I'll say, like, uh, the, uh, uh, what I call, like, the general uh, uh, gauge theory or, or, you know, how we actually turn the uh, uh, observation into manipulation, right? Um, so uh, space-time uh, metamaterials may actually, you know, kind of uh, uh, augment uh, our capabilities to uh, even, you know, uh, uh, find uh, uh, potential uh, anomal uh, or, or anomalies that are difficult to observe in a very large scale so today. Uh, I'll say uh, in the field of uh, uh, cosmology and uh, uh, general relativity, you, uh, you set up the uh, say telescope and you wait. <laughs> you wait until uh, some important event took place. But uh, uh, in, a, in a lab scale, uh, maybe you could first test the model using a uh, acoustic toy uh, problem to, to solve that. Fascinating. Yeah. Do yeah, we have any more questions? Yeah, in the chat. Yeah. Oh, yes, please do. Uh, okay, Akiki, please do. You're more than welcome. Hmm. Maybe you are mute. Just hey. have one question. Sure, Perfect. great. May you hear me? Yes, uh, I just have one question. Um, it's about uh, the metal, the liquid metal. What kind of metal exactly do you use? Oh, that particular uh, example, we used uh, a uh, gallium alloy. The uh, commercial name is called Gallingston. It is uh, a liquid metal that uh, uh, today uh, being used for some of the thermometers. They are, they are uh, replacing, for example, uh, uh, mercury, uh, and yet uh, it, it is uh, uh, safe uh, uh, and uh, 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 you know fluid in the uh, ambient uh, environment. Oh, yeah, it's a it's a great solution for uh, reconf reconfigurability. <laughs> you can you can change the in inertia matrix or the inertial part of the of the dynamical matrix. Yeah. yeah. Is is there a way to um, in your in in these uh, channels, for example, if you apply a little bit of pressure, I would guess on this uh, metal, it will it will force the channels to go to become wider or thinner. yes yes uh, yeah you can think about this as almost like a blood vessels. If you apply uh, a pulsed pressure, uh, then the blood vessel will also experience uh, uh, expansion or dilatation and uh, uh, periodic compression. Yeah. So, it, uh, is that um, can you control um, a process like that? Um, in in pre in theory, it sounds very simple, but I'm not yeah. sure. I think it is uh, uh, more controllable in terms of uh, uh, say uh, air pressure at this moment. Uh, I think the uh, uh, flow resistance of uh, uh, you know air channel is uh, uh, more predictable. Uh, 
we don't have much experience of uh, the uh, say uh, flow of a uh, liquid metal. I think there are probably uh, more uh, experiment that need need to be done. Yeah, because in in these kind of channels, I think if you apply pressure, it will find the weak the weak weakest link, and it will bubble. That's right. That's and right. It's uniform. So yeah. the the walls need to be structured somehow with a mesh or somehow That's like. Right. Yes. Yeah. So so uh, yeah, liquid metal in a so to speak a soft elastic material is not yet uh, a a very well studied, a very well established problem. Now, if you if you will ask the theorists to, what will you ask them to to look into, so that you are. Uh -huh. A student's life in the lab will get. Yeah, I think there are many things that uh, the theorists uh, can really kind of uh, provide us uh, new insights. Um, I think, uh, uh, you know, very often, uh, say, we listen to uh, your uh, theoretical groups uh, uh, who brought uh, uh, fascinating ideas of. Uh, you know, topological charges uh, of, uh, say, like, uh, you know, uh, uh, different, uh, uh, you know, uh, edge states uh, or, or, say, uh, you know, uh, I would say, like, uh, exotic modes. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, uh, very often uh, we are also asking for sensitivity of those uh, uh, states and modes, right? Because uh, as you can see, uh, when it comes to experiments, uh, there are uh, you know, many, uh, you know, so to speak, imperfections uh, related to the uh, uh, sample preparation as well as the measurements. Right. Uh, so uh, I think uh, the uh, you know conversation between uh, experimentalists and uh, 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 the theoreticians uh, takes time. I think. Uh, 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 Sebastian knows what we are, we are asking for now. <laughs> right. Uh, I totally know. <laughs> yes. Right. Yeah. But uh, 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 there are also cases that uh, you know, uh, we need to convince the uh, theoreticians to you know, relax on some of the you know, uh, conditions so that uh, it will enable or, or uh, Say uh, uh, help us to you know uh, conduct experiments in a, in a more reproducible form. For example, in this in the structure that we have on this uh, mm -hmm. page, if we somehow manage to put a surface mode or an interface resonant mode, mm -hmm. uh, will that help? And suppose we have the means to move the the resonant frequency up and down. Will that help? Uh, uh, yeah, I think so. I think so. Uh, I think, uh, 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 as Sebastian mentioned, there was uh, the the space time clothing concept that leads to, for example, you know, a uh, uh, you know, I'll say like a, a, a temporal impedance matching you know, kind of uh, effects, right? So yeah. if you consider uh, uh, how uh, say different uh, uh, layered structure. Uh, are excited and, and emit at a later stage, then uh, we could uh, really rely on the synergistic effects. Say, uh, for lack of a comparison, I would say that uh, 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 you could uh, even you know trigger this uh, uh, layered, uh, say like you know, uh, uh, emitter to transition from uh, sub radian to uh, super radian states. Okay. So so that actually can you know kind of. Uh, uh, Provided new knobs to to tune the uh, overall field, yeah, uh, transmission window. And uh, so that will that will require uh, time uh, time modulation. But for uh, mm -hmm. thinking just of uh, static, uh, like in the terms of transmission on demand, mm -hmm. uh, you need transmission at certain frequency, you just move this. Resonance up and down. Yeah, uh, it is possible, for example, uh, to apply a strain, right? So, 
you you mentioned that, that uh, uh, if there's a you know a channel that is uh, uh, sensitive to pressure, then uh, by uh, expanding the channel, you will create a different resonance mode, right? So so uh, uh, we could imagine that uh, uh, you know sound energy become localized in uh, or around this. Uh, uh, Particular uh, scattering uh, element. This uh, uh, may lead to, you know, uh, say, you know, uh, uh, after the phase, for example, for the transmitted signal as well. Ah, uh, um, I, I, <laughs> I have so many questions. I'm not sure. Please do. Please do. Please let's do. see any. Uh, let's see more people. Yeah. Uh, if we, if we, I have this uh, Bose system, and I always fascinating by the quality of the sound, especially for low frequency. I never dare to to crack and open uh, such a system because it's so expensive. But if we open it, what what will we see inside? And for example, can your lab compete with uh, with these guys in terms of <laughs> that? Yeah. Uh, I don't know uh, what is the latest uh, version, but I, I did have a chance to visit the uh, uh, Boss Corporation. They are actually, uh, uh, say, in the suburban area of, uh, uh, say, uh, uh, near Boston, uh, uh, uh -huh. Cambridge. Um, so what I uh, understand from the earlier invention is that uh, they have actually two, uh, uh, say, like microphones. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, it's two two speakers. So, mm -hmm. so the two speakers actually are uh, separated so that uh, you can create a, 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 a you know, noise cancelling effect. So this is ah. by, you know, uh, introducing coherence. Right. So, so, uh, yeah. Well, and, and, and how do they handle the, the low, the low frequencies <clears throat> with such that's a, a good question. Yeah, I don't know uh, the details, I guess. Uh, uh, in their situation, they actually have, uh, uh, you know, a pumping system, right? They have, uh, you know, a, a particular, uh, say, uh, you know, uh, a driver that, uh, uh, you know, uh, convert energy to, for example, uh, uh, sound output. Even though it is not efficient, you, you may be able to, say, uh, you know, kind of drive the, the system at a higher amplitude. Uh, ah, okay. So you say it's just raw power. It's no uh, resonance, or there are maybe you know nonlinear effect involved. I cannot guarantee, uh -huh. but uh, but uh, uh, yeah, I think there are uh, different uh, uh, methods for for like you know uh, uh, bandwidth tuning. So the moths, the moths, uh, you show them in uh, one picture when. They have this powder on the wings, I guess, precisely to not to to make that much sound, uh, so that. Yeah. Uh, so if we are looking you know. at uh, the case of uh, uh, bats versus moth, uh, bats uh, actually uh, emit sound uh, ultrasound at uh, close to hundred kilohertz, if I remember correctly, hundred to two hundred kilohertz. Huh. So that's uh, actually a very uh, yeah, you know, uh, high frequency uh, signal that is uh, uh, being reflected, for example, by the solid object. So uh, the question becomes: uh, How efficient is the uh, sound uh, being cancelled? You know, from the MOS scale. But that's actually a uh, you know very I, big subwavelength uh, acoustic uh, scattering issue. And uh, so the the. Mm -hmm. Moths, uh, I guess they tune to that frequency. In other words, they are they are not so efficient outside that range. <laughs> I guess so. I guess so. Right. So so <laughs> the the uh, you know frequency is always a trade off. Uh, if you adapt to a particular predator, you may be you know prone to a, a different predator. Wow. So uh, the. That frequency in bats, uh, so it's it was constant over the generations. Because if one would have mutated and emit sound at a different frequency, he will catch more. <laughs> yeah. So so there is actually a size effect. I think bats also different species of bats has a different size, right? So uh -huh. maybe uh, you know 
a particular moth will be only you know able to escape for a particular species of bats or, or a group of bats that are you know dominant in the area. I think actually for moth, it's ultra broadband. I think the absorption is between 20 to 120 kilohertz. Wow. It's super broadband. It's oh, over it's... a few of octaves. Mm. It's uh, highly, yeah, yeah, it's uh, quite extraordinary. Mm. Great to know. Yeah, quite yeah. extraordinary. So the, for the, for the sonar, uh, it is a mapping of the ocean floor. Uh, you started oh, yeah. very nicely with that uh, slide, which now worries everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so what? Uh, uh, now, uh, at the end of your talk, what what will be the a solution or a proposed solution for? So you like? Yeah, uh, I guess uh, uh, that's uh, always a uh, you know a, a trade off. Um, yeah, on one end, we are going to need or, or uh, depend on uh, ultrasound as a means for uh, underwater navigation and uh, the, uh, 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 surveying, uh, you know, uh, as, a, as a major method. But on the other hand, uh, I think uh, it is, a, you know, a probably, a, a, you know, a push and pull both from the regulation as well as from you know scientific uh, uh, side, to look for uh, acoustic windows. It's uh, we should probably regulate uh, you know acoustics uh, as the same way as we regulate RF bands, right? That's right. That's right. Yeah. So so uh, with more uh, information uh, uh, available on the impact to wildlife and uh, uh, other, for example, uh, uh, civil activities, then there is possible to, uh, for example, kind of uh, regulate the uh, power and uh, uh, say even like, you know, the uh, 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 exhibition period, for example, you know, uh, to minimize the, the impact of uh, uh, those operations. So if you increase the first when you uh, produce the, the wave and then you increase also the sensitivity of the receptor, Mm -hmm. You might reduce the prost, I mean the the power, or put in by let's say fifty percent. Right. At right. least uh, okay. I think we show today that uh, if we can cut uh, the power emitted by six dB and the power rec of a receiver by six dB, then that's a uh, you know a total of uh, twelve dB of uh, like you know uh -huh. um, okay. uh, overall like uh, cut right. So that's uh, you know one side of the story, but uh, uh, the other side of the story will be you know at what frequency this uh, uh, you know emission should be for example, allowed. Okay. So uh, so I think uh, uh, there are a lot to be learned from what we uh, we enjoy today as uh, so to speak uh, you know uh, uh, legal or or, or, or less yeah. kind of exposure dose and apply to uh, underwater species as well. Yes, these uh, broadband uh, sources and broadband receivers, mm -hmm. now there is a trade-off. If you are uh, forced to operate at a certain frequency, you will have to send sinusoidal waves. But if you have, a, you have access to a broadband range of frequency, you can do some sort of a pulse. And if you maybe, who knows, maybe if you engineer the poles, then uh, you can, uh, well, there is another window of opportunities that will open and we can get down to two, two more decibels or something like that. Right. Yes. And Professor Fong, do you still work on electromagnetic metamaterials as well? Yes, we do. Uh, yeah, we also have uh, uh, you know, ongoing efforts uh, on electromagnetic uh, uh, metamaterial sensors and uh, uh, you know, I would say like, uh, you know, uh, uh, yeah, over there we are uh, very much also concerned about security. We are also concerned about, uh -huh. you know, power consumption and uh, 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 
so to speak, a different uh, mode of uh, operation so that uh, you could uh, ensure your, yeah, let's say, I'll say like, you know, safe and uh, power efficient uh, near field transfer. And do you use what you learn from acoustics and you translate this into electromagnetics or vice versa, or you don't? Uh, so far, uh, we have not used as much acoustic uh, concept to electromagnetics. Uh -huh. uh, I wish I can. Uh, uh, but I will say that uh, uh, the lessons learned from uh, electromagnetisms uh, uh, has uh, really, you know, uh, uh, of kind of open up uh, new uh, avenues for our research on acoustics. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So I know I collaborated with uh, Alex Kanikaev and he was, uh, at, at the beginning, he was focusing on EM uh, metastructures and then he switched to acoustic because he, fi he finds them much more easier to work with. Uh, so, uh, but now uh, in, in the slide, you show such a nice parallel between uh, EM and acoustics. If you uh, really want to probe the velocity fields and the pressure, but in many cases, the just uh, wave propagation with uh, uh, well, yeah, the wave propagation, just in maybe in uh, in uh, in gas, it's much 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 less much easier than EM equation. Yeah, so I guess there are always uh, uh, different challenges when it comes to the specific uh, uh, material domain. But uh, uh, yeah, I, I generally agree that. Uh, you know, setting up a acoustic, uh, uh, you know, uh, equipment might be easier to convince your department head than, you know, putting a, a RF test facility. Oh, yes, yes, for sure. Yes. So in, in your lab, you have a, uh, uh, the sound, soundproof chamber uh, or uh, just enclosing the experiment in a, in a soundproof, soundproof chamber we, is enough. Yeah, we do not have an echoic chamber yet. Uh, this is uh, actually, uh, uh, in particular for low frequency, yeah, an echoic chamber will yeah, uh -huh. cost a lot. Uh, so we, we use uh, 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 impedance tubes and we use, uh, uh, so to speak, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, uh, poor man's version of uh, sound absorbers. Uh, uh, if we have to do something, uh, then we can go to collaborators. Yeah, I think today most of uh, uh, your, uh, I'll say, advanced uh, anechoic chambers are, are available in industry. Boss, for example, they they have a very beautiful facility. So MIT doesn't have one. <laughs> yeah, the last one MIT had uh, retired back in nineties. So uh -huh. so we oh, lost wow. the opportunity. Uh huh. Wow. <laughs> But I think if you will ask, or uh, you'll you could get get it back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I think uh, uh, that will require you know a lot of uh, uh, say like you know uh, capital investment right away. Uh huh. Yeah. Wow. So it's that expensive, you will say? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, do we have any more questions? People in the audience? Uh, Sebastian, can I ask a short question? Yes, please do, Mohamed. Uh, thank you for this great talk. So my question is- We uh, can't really hear you. Can you speak more uh, clearly? Yeah, the yeah, short question is, uh, uh, can this material be used for uh, wave, uh, acoustic wave guiding? And in general, uh, is acoustic wave guiding an uh, interesting topic? Or what do you think about it? Yes, certainly. Certainly, acoustic wave guiding is a very uh, interesting topic. Um, the uh, soft materials at this stage uh, uh, is uh, relatively new, and we don't know uh, how critical it is uh, in terms of, uh, uh, say, uh, 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 loss. Um, 
yeah, I, I think uh, a waveguiding may require, uh, you know, a low loss uh, uh, system that can be uh, measured at uh, at least uh, like you know hundreds of wavelengths. So uh, on that aspect, uh, uh, the uh, hydrogels that we are we are using is is not yet perfect. Okay. And this can be used for uh, wave guiding in uh, free space, like in air, or yes, you can. Oh. Yeah. I uh, want to point <clears throat> point out um, one aspect um, <clears throat> regarding to these uh, channels which are filled with uh, with liquid. That, uh, for example, if uh, if you have uh, just a solid, uh, let's say a solid band. However, when you rotate this one, it shows different uh, scattering uh, scattering areas. Then you can adjust. Uh, the whole thing by just uh, rotating these uh, uh, these objects, which will be a little bit simpler than filling with metal. Yet, of course, one has to worry about uh, how you move them in in the high inside the hydrogel. Yes, yeah. Uh, uh, we actually had an earlier collaboration with uh, uh, you know Professor Hong Shen Chen uh from Zhejiang University um yeah uh, over there we showed that you could uh, uh turn a uh, Maxwell lens to a uh, uh Lundberg lens for example just by rotating you know 90 degrees so so that's actually uh, one of the possibility to do that or uh, some of our uh recent research it's uh, um focus on uh not uniform uh, rotations or but rather uh, patterning uh, through different algorithms mm -hmm. with the with the purpose of opening gaps and many of these gaps are topological and all you need to do is to to rotate or uh, uh, to to al to alternate or uh, uh, simply uh, adjust whatever whatever one can adjust with a certain algorithm, which very much, very, very often is uh, That's something I was, I wanted to ask if these channels could be made, uh, you pattern them according to an algorithm. Uh, for example, just a sign, sign function in terms of width. Uh, uh, that's true, that's true. It's feasible, but uh, I, I would like to uh, follow up with more details uh, if you, uh, uh -huh. you, know, uh, you are interested. Let's uh, let's communicate probably offline. Uh, yeah, I think there are say uh, uh, different uh, uh, details that we wish to know about uh, how those should be arranged and how they are uh, say changing over time and space. That will be great. <laughs> Okay, I think it's been a great question and answer uh, session. And I would like to thank again uh, Professor uh, Fang for this wonderful talk. It's really inspiring. And uh, thank you so much, uh, Nicolas. And uh, next week we shall have uh, Philippe Roux speaking about uh, geophysics. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a wonderful so summertime. Thank yeah. you. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.